Alan Miller of Pittman Public Relations. Today I get to introduce two friends of mine, Kate Buck and Warren Woodlock. Today at the Digital World Expo, they're going to be talking on getting started with social media. And please give them a round of applause. We're all about social media, so please get it out, turn it on, and at least tweet once, tell everybody that you're here. Um, there's always more people doing something than there are attending, no matter what the size of the audience. Hundreds of people at an event, thousands of people at an event, still more people at home that want to be there. So check in, tell people where you're at, and it's just a good way to stay in touch with people, and that's one of the things we're going to be talking about. So I just tweeted. Go ahead and tweet. So I'm Warren Whitlock. Uh, I wrote a book called Twitter Revolution, first book out on uh, Twitter. It's about three years old now. And so our new book is called Profitable Social Media. It's at ProfitableSocialMedia.com. And uh, I've been doing some of the social media stuff for quite some time, as has Kate Buck Jr. Hi, I'm, I'm Kate Buck Jr. I uh, run a social media management firm from Austin, Texas called KBJ Online. I uh, read Warren's Twitter Revolution book about three years ago. That was how we got introduced to each other. And um, I manage brands um, ranging from solopreneurs, um, small businesses, nonprofits and corporations I manage online presence for all the all those different myriad spectrum of um, companies as well as I train social media teams so I go in-house and train social media management teams um, as well as with through digital products training social media managers how to manage the online presence for brands so this is um, getting started with social so just so you guys know we are really covering the basics of social media in this session we are going to Get, um, we want to get a sense, though, who's in the room, even given that it's a, um, it is a, a, a beginner set, not, not a beginner session, it's a basic session. It's a basic so, session, because even if you know about social media, if you've been on Twitter and Facebook yourself, even if your company has had a page for four years, it it's, doesn't mean necessarily that you are, you know, doing all the things you can do with social media. Um, I don't think I'm scratching the surface of what I could do. Um, and I like to say that, you know, there's hardly anybody that's passed maybe one or two percent of what the capability is. This is, that's why we call the first book Twitter Revolution. It's the start of something big. It's going to change the way we all do our marketing and conduct business for the future. And we'll get into that in a moment, but let's ask you. Very good. So our whole point in this session was about getting back to the basics. So whether you've been doing this um, for more than, you know, for more than five years, I know I've been managing online communities for about six years now, um, not social media the way we, we know it or think of it now. Um, we're talking about reviewing and coming back to the basics and looking at your strategy. Um, social media has evolved from, an, you know, an infancy where we're always saying social media is so new, it's so new, it's so new, we're, we're in the discovery phase. And, and we think it's time to stop saying that and let social media progress into its adolescence. Maybe it's in its terrible twos. That's kind of what I think right now because there's a lot of crazy things happening with technology and a lot of new ideas and a lot of um, controversy around different types of strategies. But now is the time and now is always really the time to be thinking about your strategy. And then my, just, my little note there to you guys is, P.S. Setting, having a Twitter page or you know, setting your brand up with a Facebook page is not a social media strategy. So we are, that's, and that's what we're going to get into today. So we're not going to get into any of that tactic stuff of what you actually need, you know, to do. And the tactical stuff is important, right? But beginning with a strategy and always having that strategy top of mind is what we're going to get into in this session. Right. It's, it's, it's actually something I learned when I was working on the Twitter revolution. But we actually started out calling it Twitter handbook. Quickly figured out Twitter was changing faster than we could even write a handbook for back in 2008. Um, and so, yeah, if you pick up the book I wrote three years ago, there may be a couple of terms of where something is on Twitter that aren't quite the same, but we wrote the book to be perennial. We found that to be true, and even more so, I found that the things I've learned over decades of doing business and my study of what business was done before that, it's how people want to be treated just basically in life anyway. So our, our philosophy is you treat people the way they, they want to be treated, you get them what they want, that's what marketing is all about, and these are just tools to help you do it better today. Would you rather have, uh, spend all your time out blasting to try to get people, how would you rather be spoken to? Do you, want, do you like interruption ads on TV and people hounding you and say, come buy me, buy me, buy me? Or would you prefer that when you get ready to buy something, there's somebody that's there ready to help? 
Um, we'd all rather have a line of people waiting to buy our products and services, and all of us would rather buy that way. And, that's, and so it's just natural that we're going to go back to the, the idea of dealing one-on-one -on -one with individuals. Well, we, we came up with yesterday, you know, if you were doing B2B, you'd want to be on that club level right there with all the club seats. You wouldn't necessarily be milling around um, throughout the stadium. So that brings you to how do you find, how do you talk to Joe, who sits in section 119, row 12, seat 3. And he has a specific need that no one else in that stadium has. So will we be able to, even, even though there are some things that we do know about them, like Warren mentioned, we know that they're football fans, we know um, that they root for one team or the other, we know he's a male, we, we can guess about his age, we know a few things about him, but how do we know specifically what his relation is to our brand? Um, what, uh, what, what, what would interest him about using our product or anything else that's a concern, a like, or now I'm the one skipping ahead. But the whole point is, is that we're trying to fine tune it and get so granular that we can actually speak to individual people and not this mass audience that we just assume all relate to our brand in the same way. Right. What we really like to do is if you're in the business of selling band-aids, is know exactly when, you, when your potential customer cuts his finger. We want to have a line of people begging to get into the business. Anybody? Y'all want that, right? Guess what these people are talking about when they're standing in line? Anybody think that they're all talking about, boy, I can't wait to get in? Some of them may, but not the whole time. They're talking about whatever. And if you engage with those people and you make it an enjoyable experience while they're even standing in line or when they get in the club or whatever it is, they're going to share that with other people. You know? Clear said something to Kate. She said something... Back to Clear, told you all about it, I heard it, I feel better about Clear, and that's how, that's how the messages start to spread. The, um, the downside of this is we don't know exactly where all the messages go, we're going to get to that about tracking, but the upside is it really doesn't cost very much to treat people the way that you ought to be treating them anyway. So if somebody's standing in line and you decide that, you know, it's hot out tonight, let's give everybody a bottle of water, somebody might decide to share that with a friend. If you put one of those booths where they could take their, take their picture and send it to Facebook, no doubt these kind of people would. Depending on what it is, you think about ways that you can better serve the people that are already fans, and especially the ones that have a lot of friends. I'm looking at this group. Don't they look like they all have friends that aren't in the line somewhere out? And we want them to tell all those friends about the cool club that they went to. Not after they went, before they went, during, at any time, even when they're thinking about going, because remember, my theory is there's always, there, I guess there's fact, although this is going to be a tough one to prove, that there are more people that aren't there than the people that are there. Same as, same as this room now. Even though we've got a nice group here, there's probably more people at the conference that didn't make it to the session. There's more people out there that wanted to come to Digital World Expo than, than are here. And there's more people that should know about it, that want to you know, improve their their business and do better than we'll ever get there. And so encouraging people to talk about your business in a good way is the best thing to do. Uh, it's no longer just a matter of can we put out the fires and keep people from saying bad things about us. What can we do to incentivize them to t tell other people? The easy way is to think of, wow, if we give everybody a gift if they like our Facebook page, won't that get us a whole bunch of people to like us? We incentivize them that way. But if you incentivize them by being nice and give them what they really want, whatever that is, it'll grow even faster and it'll be a long-lasting, real relationship instead of just buying their vote. Line of people outside your business that know, like, and trust you because uh, that's essentially who those people are. That's why they're there is because they know about you. The reason that they even want to do business or have an affinity with you, they like you, they've had an interaction with you that was positive, or maybe they haven't yet, but they have some relationship to you that is that is positive. And, and it's then, an affinity, it's both directions. If, uh, and, and, then, and they trust you, right? And so how do you actually do that online is with brand and online reputation management. Um, very, very basically that is monitoring mentions and um, links and posts and stories, monitoring everything about your brand online from um, reviews to blog posts 
to tweets, to Facebook, to, to all of it, as much as you can actually get your hands on. We'll get to tracking in just a minute, but uh, this is where I came to. I monitor my brand's names. I monitor misspellings of their names, common misspellings of their names. I monitor the names of executives or uh, frontline people that people uh, that people in customer service have contact with. I monitor, you name it. I, I have 12 or more searches for just about every client that I work with because I don't want to mistakenly miss a mention um, that somebody misspelled or that some, you know, I don't want to leave any customer without the idea that, that we care enough to be uh, digging for their, for their conversations. And it's really not as hard as I'm making it sound, but uh, the truth is I find sometimes that people are a little bit lazy about this and they're maybe just monitoring their at replies, you know, and it's like, uh, how many times is somebody not using uh, on Twitter the specific at reply mentioned to talk about you, especially not to say that bad doesn't happen, but when, especially when it's bad, a lot of times they aren't tagging you because they, they, they want it to be somewhat passive aggressive. So, um, so you know, you really, when it comes to brand management, you have three choices here. You can just completely ignore online altogether, um, which is what a lot of people do. They have their fingers in their ears going, la, 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 this isn't happening. Um, and that's just completely idiotic. Uh, then you see other brands um, that we've consulted with that are listening, so they know what's going on. Um, they're not ignoring it, but then they're not doing anything about it. So they're not actually creating any affinity. They're not um, talking back to the people that do like them, and they're not resolving um, negative issues online. And then, you know, the last one, which is obviously what, <laughs> what we're advocating for here, is that you're both listening, and using that opportunity of the listening for, um, for data, data collection, right, for that segmentation um, so that you can speak. Data works it, it, for two things. One is I can start to find out what you know, uh, other brands that you like. Um, I can find out more about you, and that helps me uh, speak to you in that, um, oh, goodness, somebody bring me some coffee. In, in, in that one-to-one, -one, yeah. in that one-to-one -one dialogue way, but it also helps me with product development. It also helps me know what your other likes and interests are. It helps me in many, many ways besides um, just being able to segment. Although segmenting is the coolest part of it, I think. Right. So, so it's like taking it a step further. Besides, we just hear "listen" as one of those buzzwords so many times. Listen to your customers. And then we hear engage so many times, but it's like, what does that really, what does that really mean for a brand? And, and so many brands think that we can just stop at listening, or they think that engagement means broadcasting. And what we're really talking about is trying to actually understand um, your customers on a very deep level beyond just their association with your brand, and two, talking to them about those other things beyond just your brand. <laughs> So how does that impact revenue? And that's where we come to tying those interactions or tying your sales back to those interactions. Um, you have to be able to go back to where the sale happened and figure out how did that person get to you. And that even happens before the sale, right? So taking um, every single one of your transactions, it's if you could tag Joe in that row and follow him around and know everything about him, but then also know as he uh, moves forward through your funnel, what are the actions that they take? You can start making some references then. Like for instance, the, some of the things that we said about Joe, um, uh, that he that he has a horse that he likes, I can't believe tacos our examples. On tacos on Thursdays. I can now send Joe targeted messages about tacos on Thursdays, and then I can watch to see if he buys tacos on Thursdays from me moving forward through the funnel. So you have to look at your sales process and how you track your actual transactions and then figure out the, the tool, which again there are many of, uh, or the way that you're going to figure out how to tag Joe out in social media so that you know when he gets to you that that's one, that's where he came from, and then two, as he progresses through your sales funnel and either buys from you or gets on your email list or whatever actions it is that he takes with you, uh, that you can start collecting the right data about those. So you keep um, uncovering for yourself the right ways to speak to people, what they're actually interested in, what they are buying. So everybody who's interested in horses buys this product and people that are interested in cows buy this product.